Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Crossroads of Grace Faith Talk Bible Study. <laughs> it's our uh, first uh, first night, I guess, with our new uh, kind of uh, format here. And it's good to see all of you online. Let's, uh, let's go over here and let's uh, take a look who we have online here. Let's see. We have, um, hey, Cammie. There's Jeannie. Krista, Jessica, Gloria, good to see you all online uh, with us tonight. All right, uh, well, again, let me welcome you to our Crossroads of Grace Bible study. I'm Pastor Donnie Miller from the Crossroads of Grace in Johnson, Florida. We're glad to have you online with us tonight, and uh, again, it's a uh, new new. New things going on here. I have to get used to uh, things have been moving around and, and things, so bear with me while I try to get used to it tonight. Don't forget to uh, type your uh, prayer request there in the chat window, and we'll be sure to pray over all the prayer requests before we close out tonight. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? Get, having a good week this week, I hope. Uh at least uh, those of you that uh, had joined us on the uh, 21 day fast <laughs> you're you're eating again so you must be uh, you must be at least a little bit happy all right no you sh you should be a lot happy actually we had a, a very good uh, very good last uh, 21 days uh Krista sister remember Keith tonight in prayer that's Marcy's husband uh, been hearing a lot of good reports about uh, our 21 day fast and I know that uh, we're going to be hearing a lot more uh, good things that are happening as a result of our fasting uh, I'm I'm so thankful for all of you that uh, joined with us this year some of you for the first time and I commend you for uh for, for joining us and, and, and undertaking the 21 day fast and I'm I'm sure that uh, it was an eye-opening experience for you uh, as well as uh, praying that that as you pursued God uh, some great things happened in your life amen um, one thing I want to uh, real quick uh, let you know, and, and this is for our younger people, our youth actually, uh, this Sunday night, our youth, are they're going bowling. And uh, if you have uh, a young person in your household, ages 13 through 18, and would like to join us, uh, you can find the information on our Facebook page right after uh, the Bible study tonight. I'll putting on there the the information uh i said su yes sunday i want to make sure I, I got that right uh but uh, i'll put that on there before uh or just after we close out the bible study tonight okay uh again don't forget to put your prayer request there in the chat window and we'll uh, pray for all those before we close out tonight let's uh let's go ahead and start with uh prayer tonight heavenly father we thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are joining us online tonight for our online Bible study. We ask, Lord, that you would be with us. Uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit would uh, lead us, direct us. Lord, I pray that, Lord, uh, our hearts and minds would be open, Lord, to your presence and to your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we are actually uh, in the very first day of February tonight. Uh, wow, uh, January just flew by, didn't it? Uh, <laughs> first, uh, first day of February, and I know that uh, we are in the second second month of this brand new year. And uh, as many of you know, especially those of you that uh, attend the Crossroads of Grace, you know that every year I look for and ask God for a word 
And uh, when I say a word, I mean a word, just, just a word that will uh, carry us through the year. Every year, not only do I look for a word, but there are many people in uh, the uh, religious, I guess, so to say, <laughs> circles, that they often look for a word from God, and when they look for a word, they're not looking for a word like I look for a single word. There's many that will will seek God for a word, uh, for God to speak to them uh, about the, the coming new year. There are many people who follow Jesus Christ that do the same thing every year. They, they, they seek direction. I'll say it that way. Uh, they're seeking direction from God, and and I do as well. Uh, for me, the twenty-one day fast that we go through each year, it's a it's a time for me to to refocus, if you will. Refocus. It's a time uh, not only for uh, to to refocus, but it is also a time for me to to seek God and to uh, see more more clearly and ask God to help me to to see more clearly I, I believe that God wants us to accomplish many things this year and there are I believe there are some scriptural st uh, uh, strategies if you will that if we will apply them, I believe that we'll have a, a, a not only a, a wonderful year, I believe we'll have a great year. We'll have a great 2023 if we'll, we will apply these scriptural strategies. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, I want to talk about uh, how to, what the strategies are, first of all, and how to apply them to our lives so that we can have not just a, a great year at the church, but we can have a great year even in our families, even in our, in our home. Hey, Crystal, good to see you online tonight. Um, so with that in mind, uh, the first strategy, I, I believe the Apostle Paul, he, uh, he shared one of the strategies with the Philippian church. And we can find that if, let's go over to the Bible. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And let's read verses 13 and 14. This is uh, the very first strategy tonight that we can use in our own lives and even in the life of our church. We can use these strategies to... Uh, uh, guarantee us to have a wonderful year. Uh, Crystal says that she can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? If you would just type yes in the uh, chat window if you can hear me. I just want to make sure uh, that everyone can uh, can hear tonight. And Crystal, you, okay, they're saying yes, that they can hear me. So Crystal, you may need to uh, make sure that your your volume's on and volume's on. Okay, very good. So everybody can hear me. Let me just real quick write down these names so that I don't forget. Preston Townsend. Uh, okay, just want to make sure. All right. Hey, wow. Look at all these people online with us tonight. Let me just real quick shout out to all of them. Angie Harper, good to see you online. Emmy Stillwell, good to see you online with us tonight. Uh, wow. All right. So let's let's go let's go back to this. Let's go to Philippians chapter three, verses thirteen and fourteen. And again, these are these are strategies that we can we can uh, implement in our lives to to help us to uh, make sure that we have a good uh, twenty twenty three. So. Very first strategy, Paul, from Paul. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. Now watch this. 
forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, I, 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 want, to, I want to read it one more time. But I, I want to I want to point out some words that we need to uh, maybe highlight in, in your Bible there, brothers and sisters. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do: first word you might want to highlight, forgetting what is behind, all right, and straining toward what is ahead. I press. That's the second word you might want to highlight. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So there we go. We, we, we The very first thing that we need to do here is we have to forget about what's behind. Okay? He says forgetting the, the things that are behind. So the very first thing that we need to do, we need to uh, uh, forget what is behind. And when I say forget what's behind, don't only forget the bad things, but but Paul Paul is a is a great example here of this, forgetting those things that are behind. Not only did Paul have to forget the bad things behind, but Paul Paul was uh, the one who started. These churches, he had a congregation at that time of probably, uh, if not nearly or more than 20,000 people. Paul not, was saying, not only do I have to forget my past, when the bad things, but I'm also forgetting the good things. I, I, and, and when I say forget, so a lot of times when we, we think of the word forget, we think, you know, um, absent-minded or, or, or something like that. That's not at all what, what Paul's talking about here when he wrote this. Forgetting means that whatever it is that, that you've chosen to forget, you mean it, it means that it holds no power over me. It holds no power over you. Your past, it doesn't hold any power over you any longer. Or even your 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 uh the, the past good things, they, they don't you, you don't count them as, look at me and look what I've done. But you've put those things aside, forgetting the past. It doesn't matter what's happened in your past. Listen, we can only change our future, not the past. While, you know, 2022 might not have been the best for some of us, <laughs> we're still here, right? We're still here. And as long as we're here, we have the opportunity to change our lives. Uh, somebody needs to get a hold of that tonight. Uh, some of you are are, are are going into 2023 and you're carrying the things of the past and the, those things of the past, they're weighing you down. God, listen, God has a wonderful plan for your life. He has a wonderful plan for the days ahead for you and not just for you, but for all of us. God has a wonderful plan for our life. Read Jeremiah. Jeremiah tells us about it. That he has a wonderful plan for our life. And as long as we are, you know, we're, we're here, we have the opportunity to change our lives. But we first, we have to let go of. We've got to uh, uh, leave the past in the past. We, we, we need to not allow the past to control us. And not just the, the, the past bad things, but even the good things. You know, sometimes we hold on to to things that are even good, and we allow those things that are, are good in our lives to, to, to limit us as if we can't rise above what we've already accomplished. Listen, God has so much more uh, for us left to do, and even greater things, he said. <laughs> so, so don't let even the good or bad past things, don't, don't let them uh, control you going into 2023, it, if we're always looking at what's behind us, we will never reach what's ahead of us, right? 
if, if we're if we're constantly looking over our shoulder, it's hard for us to keep moving forward, right? So so if we're always looking at what behind us, we'll never reach what's ahead of us. We can't really walk forward when we're looking backward. And and and, and you know, <laughs> not long ago, and I think I've told many of you this already, but uh, we were over at my daughter Sarah's house. And we were sitting on the back porch, and and we were talking about. I asked my daughter. I said, "Do you remember when uh, you know living at home, and uh, we told you to always be in uh, before the street lights came on, or when the street lights came on, you needed to come home." And and our granddaughter, who just turned sixteen this year, she she <laughs> she looked at me, and and this is how I, I really uh, uh, knew I had had aged because she looked at me and said, "Oh, Papa." <laughs> are you talking about the good old days again? <laughs> you know, some people, they often mention the good old days, you know, when, when they're, when they're thinking about or, or, or when, when things were better, you know, you know, it's, listen, those days are gone and, and, and we should, we should get excited about the good new days. Hallelujah. Are, are you hearing me tonight? Uh, we, we need to get excited about 2023. I want to tell you something. 2020 for, or 2020, 2022 for the crossroads of grace. I don't know how you all felt, but I felt that we had a wonderful year last year at the crossroads of grace. I, I, I was able to baptize more people than we've ever baptized in the entire 10 years that we've been there. We baptized them in 2022. It was awesome. Not just that, but but all of the people who were born into the kingdom of God in 2022. I am looking forward to a wonderful, powerful 2023. I, I'm thankful for what he did in 2022. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm thankful for what he's done uh, for us at our church over these last 10 years. But I'm telling you right now, I, I, I'm looking for even greater things in 2023. Are you? I, I, I'm thankful for the good old days, but I'm not going to let the good old days, I'm not going to let what happened in 2022 limit me and limit us and what God can do in 2023 at the crossroads of grace. And not only in cro the crossroads of grace, but in my life as well. I am not going to be put any limits on God, but I'm going to forget the past in other words, you know, it, we're, let me let me say it this way: we don't have the capability to to just just choose to forget, okay? And meaning it, it's no longer there. But what that means when it says to forget the past, it means don't let the past have any power over your life going forward. Don't let the past limit you, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Don't let it limit <laughs> what you believe God can do in your life. That's, that's, what, that's what it's saying right there. And, and that's what we need to do. That's the first strategy. If you want to have a, a, a great 2023, don't limit God by what's your experiences of the past, whether good or bad. I'll just say it that way. Don't don't let your your uh, experiences of your past don't let the experiences of, of your past, whether good or bad, limit what God can do for you in 2023. That's the first strategy. Second one. Let's move on to the second one. Let's go. Let's go to. Uh, let's go back over the Bible, and let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and let's read verses 13 and 14. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. This is what it says. Now, if you've been on our Bible study for any time at all uh, in the past, you know that whenever we see something in red, when the scripture's in red, that's actually, that's Jesus talking right there. So Jesus here, in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, 
so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Okay? Let, let, let's read it again, and I'm going to tell you some words to highlight here. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Jesus speaking here, he begins, And I will do whatever you ask in my name. Okay? So the very first thing right there, and I will do whatever what you ask. You might want to highlight that word, ask. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, again, verse number 14 now. You may ask, there's that word again, me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So, the first strategy was to forget the past. The second strategy is found right here in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, when Jesus, he promised here to do whatever we ask. Second strategy is ask. <laughs> Very simple. Ask. Learn to ask. Again, Jesus promised here to do whatever we ask. We are to ask, is what he says here. We are to ask, and I know, you know, <laughs> It, again, it, getting back to to the to the basics. This is this is where I believe that that God is is not only taking me and pulling me toward, but I believe he's he's, he's pulling his church toward, and that is to get back to the basics. And and I think we we have forgotten how how basic and how simple God's word is. But yet, how powerful it, powerful it is. He simply said, we are to ask what we will, and it will be done. Hold on, Pastor. Hold on for just a minute. Hold up. Are you telling me that we can ask whatever we will, and it will be done? Do I need to go back to the Scripture again? Let, okay. Okay. Let, 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 let's go back over here for just, just a minute. Let's read what it says. It says, Jesus now is talking here. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me what? Ask me for what? Come on, somebody. What's he say there? You may ask me for what? You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Is that not what it says? It's very simple, very plain. The, the, problem, the problem is, uh, the problem there is, is that we, we, uh, we can't, just can't believe it's true. We, we just... We, we we try to figure it out. What now? What does God really? Come on now. Let, let's think. Let's let's put our let's put our ecclesiastical thinking caps on, <laughs> and let's think about this. Does God really mean that? Does Jesus really mean that? Well, if he didn't, he wouldn't have said it. It says there we may ask anything in His name, and He says that He will do it. I know there are people, there are people who don't ask God for something because they think they don't deserve it, right? With Jesus, it's not about what we deserve, but what it's about, it's about what he wants to give us. Hello, <laughs> hello now, look at that. Again, there are so many people, they won't ask God for anything because they think that they don't deserve it. And with Christ, it's not about what we deserve. It's about what he wants to give us. He loves us. Amen? 
He loves us and he want, we, we've got to believe that he wants the very best for us. He says that. that. Not only does he say it, he proved it. God proved it. How do I know? Uh, John 3.16. Y'all know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he did what? He sent the very best. He sent his only begotten son. He wants the best for us. And we've got to be, come to the place where we believe that's absolutely true, that God wants the very best for us. And sometimes, you know, what we do, instead of believing God wants the very best for us, what we do, we gripe. Hello? We, we gripe. But listen, gripe, griping's not asking. Complaining is not asking. That, that's what too many of us do, do too much of. Too many of us, we, we, we gripe about things, we complain about things, we criticize things. Rather than believing that God wants the best for us and rather than ask Him for what we have need of or ask Him for the rather than ask Him, we want to complain about it. We want to gripe about it. We want to criticize. But he's probably thinking, you know, and, and, and well, sometimes even us, we, God, why haven't you done this for me yet? And God's probably thinking, well, why haven't you asked me yet? <laughs> why haven't you asked? Jesus told us right here in the scripture that we just read, Jesus told us to go ahead and ask him. If we practice asking as the scriptures have told us to and ask as we should, man, it will absolutely change our year and change our lives. I think, again, about last year, think about uh, the beginning of uh, 2022 when I asked God for a word. I ask him. I, I every year I ask him for a word, a word, not 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 a not a paragraph, not a sentence, uh, not not a book. I, I ask him for a a word. And last year, not only did he give me a word like he always has done before, but he confused me a little bit because uh, he gave me two words. Uh, one one wasn't good enough. He gave me two words: breakthrough glory. And, and boy, did he send his breakthrough glory to Crossroads of Grace last year, and, and not just Crossroads of Grace, but into all of our lives. I, I'm so thankful for, for what he's done. That's what God wants to do for us if we ask. God actually not only wants to, to, to give you what you ask for, he wants to give you abundantly more than what we could even ask or think, the Bible says. And I got a pretty good imagination. You all know me. <laughs> you all know my imagination. I got a, I got a pretty good imagination. I, I, but he says, you know, I want to give you more than you could even ask or think. But we've got to ask. He wants us to ask. And, and we, we've got to learn not only to forget our past going here into 2023, don't let your past hold any power over you, whether good or bad. Don't let your past limit what God, whoo, hallelujah. Don't, don't let your past limit what God can do for you going into 2023. Man, as, 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 I, as, as I'm talking about this tonight, I'm getting excited because, man, I, I, I feel like I, I sense in the spirit that God is telling even me right now tonight, even teaching this, that God wants to, to, and excuse me for the way I'm going to say it, and if it offends you, just have to offend you, but I, 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 I believe that God wants to just really blow our minds in 2023. And, you know, actually, I don't, I don't think it would be that hard for him to do uh, because of all that's going on right now in the world around us, all of the, wow, just it seems like gloom and doom and agony just just all of that the mess that's going on and to write in oh, hallelujah thank you lord that right in the middle 
of all of that gloom and doom and agony and seemingly no hope, God began to pour his blessing out upon you if you would just ask. And people begin to look at you and like, what? And I don't know what you're doing, but man, I see the blessing of God upon your life. And, 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 and man, all this mess that's going on in the world, but God is, I want to know what, I want to know what you're doing. And it will open up a door of opportunity for us to be begin to, to witness and begin to tell people who have no hope about the goodness of God in our lives. But we got to ask. We need to ask. We need to learn to ask God. And listen, don't, oh, come on now. Don't ask God for just uh, little things. I dare you to ask God for something big. Listen. I'll say it this way. I dare you to ask God for something so big that it, it's going to have to take God for it to come to pass. I think that, I believe that's, uh, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to ask. Amen. But listen, I, I no, never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I, I just I just really want you to, 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 to grasp this tonight. That that you know, don't let your past hold any power over you and learn, learn to ask God for things in your life. Don't don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Don't 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 think that you don't we don't deserve it. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We don't deserve it, but it's not about what we deserve. It's about what he wants to give his children. Listen to me. Don't you want to give your children, your, your, your children, don't you want to do good things for your children? Don't you want to, 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 to get good things, for, give them good things? And the Bible says that if, if we... If we uh, like to do that for our children, how much more does our Heavenly Father want to do that for us? Wow. God is so good. And, and again, I, I, I am so looking forward <laughs> to this year in 2023 to see God bless us. And, you know, it not just with with material things I, I i'm thankful for those things but man i'm i'm praying that god would open up oh spiritual things that only he can open in your lives that 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 you would come to 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 the full knowledge of everything there is in christ and experience, man, great things in ministry, and be able to. We, we've already, we've already. Uh, this past Sunday, uh, uh, Jessica is on with us tonight. Jessica, who, who, uh, I'm so thankful for Jessica and, and all that she's done. She's been with us uh, almost since we began uh, at, at the Cross of the Grace. She's she's came. And, and and she entered right into uh, uh, she she cleans the church she she also uh, works in the nursery and she's she's been content to do that but through this fast one one night she said that she wrestled with God all night long and and we've we've needed a women's ministry leader and and Jessica uh, called Krista or uh, had Krista call her. And she told Krista that, that she had wrestled all night with God. And, and, and she wanted to step up and, and become the women's leader for our women's ministry. Something that, that, that I didn't know that, 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 that <laughs> she was even remotely interested in. But look at God. God opened up. And I believe that God's going to open up even more in 2023 and and i'm excited about it i'm excited about what god is not only going to bless again materially but spiritually in individual lives as well as our church 
and, and I'm, 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 I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm, I'm so looking forward to it tonight. Amen. Uh, but we, we've, we've got to learn to ask. That's number two. So, so number one, forget your past. Don't let it hold any power over you, whether good or bad. Right. Second, learn to ask. Ask God for for great things in your life. Ask God for for big things in your life. Well, what if he doesn't do it, Pastor? Well, what if he does? <laughs> and listen, you <laughs> if you don't ask, I, I heard this, uh, somebody who is a, I think a, I don't even know what they call them, the uh, internet marketer or something like that. But they said, if you never ask, the answer is always no. <laughs> if you never ask, the answer is always no. What if you ask and the answer is yes? Huh? Wow. Take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Okay, number three. Moving on. Number three. Uh, another. The Bible gives us another strategy for a great year. Let's go to the Old Testament this time. Let's go over to the Old Testament. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. <laughs> Habakkuk. Uh, let's go to Habakkuk, the Old Testament, chapter 2. Habakkuk, chapter 2. And let's read there, beginning with verse number 2. This is what it says. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, I'm going to read it again. Get your highlighter ready. And I'm going to tell you what, what word to highlight there. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. It says, then the Lord answered me and said, "You got your highlighter ready? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna highlight three words right here. Write the vision. Highlight, write the vision, and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak." And it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. Amen? Wow. So, number three. Write your vision. Write your vision. If, if, we, if we desire something in, in uh, 2023... We need to write it down. Write it down. That's how we make our vision plain. Write it down. Whatever we wish to see ourselves accomplish in 2023 and even beyond, it needs to be written down. You see, many people, they, they don't see beyond the year in front of them. However, Listen, God doesn't have just a one-year plan for us. He has a plan for our entire life. <laughs> That's why we need to put our vision in front of us. Uh, I heard, I heard a, 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 a man say that he, he doesn't know of any head of any large corporation who doesn't have what's called a vision board. He said, not only should we not have or, or not only have a vision board, but maybe we should make it a screensaver. <laughs> uh, maybe we should make it a screensaver on our computers, maybe a, a, a screensaver on our mobile devices. Our vision, listen, our vision is, isn't really a vision if we can't see it. it. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Our vision isn't really a vision if we can't see it. When 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 a vision isn't in front of us, what happens? We forget about it, don't we? We forget about it. 
uh, vision, it, it must be written down. Nobody will ever be a visionary if they don't write things down. So, number one, forget the past, whether good or bad. Don't let it, ha don't let it hold any power over you. Number two, ask. Learn to ask and, and, and uh, ask for, for big things. I'm not saying you can't ask him for small things, but I'm just saying don't 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 limit yourself is what I'm trying to say. Don't limit yourself what you ask God for. And then number three, write write the vision down. Write down what it is that you want to accomplish in 2023. All right. And then we want to tell people about Jesus. There are people who, you know, when they come to a new year, maybe they have only financial goals. And we should have those. But but our goals should be more than money. Our goals should be more than material things. Listen, God's vision is about people. Uh, I'm going to say that again, and you might want to write it down. God's vision is about people. They're more valuable than money. I'm going to say it again. They're more valuable than money. That's why it's so important for uh, us to bring uh, people to church than have a lot of money. If we, if we can make a change in people's lives, the material things, the money, it, it'll come. It'll come. But our whole purpose in life as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ is to show Jesus to people. That, that's, that's our whole purpose in life, it is to show them his love for them. Listen, he died for us. He died for us. He took the stripes upon his back for our healing. He came to give us abundant life. We see that in John chapter 10, verse number 10. The thief cometh what? But for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you have might have life and have life more abundantly. What are we here for? We are here to change the world, right? But we do that by changing people's lives. There are about, what? There are about uh, 2 billion Christians on the earth today, that means there's about 6 billion non-Christians. <laughs> we need to care more about showing them Jesus than about walking on the streets of gold in heaven. If they start seeing God at work, they'll want to change. They'll want to change. Listen, I am excited about this new year. I hope you are too. God has a plan for us in 2023. So we need to forget the past. We need to ask him for what we need, including, listen, including his vision for us as individuals and as a body, as the crossroads of grace. And we need to write that vision down that he gives to us. I'm asking, and as I ask, I'm writing down. And when I come to the end of this year, <laughs> I'm believing that my life is going to be so different in many different ways, actually. And listen, I'm praying that yours will be different as well. I don't know about you, but as I look at, at, at the uh, names on our screen here tonight, I look there's Cammie, Jessica, Angie, Emmy, uh, uh, Gloria, Regina, Crystal. As I look at all of these names, I am Brandy. I am praying that when we come to the end of 2023, <laughs> oh hallelujah, that every name there you will be different, and I mean different in a wonderful, powerful way. I, I, I'm praying that, that God would, would, would show himself 
so real to you in your lives that 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 even when you look back over your life 2023 you you look back and say wow look what god has done in 2023 that's my prayer that's my prayer i i i am oh hallelujah i am praying genie as well i i earl <laughs> i jeff man as i i'm doug as 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 i look at these names man all these names are coming before me and i i i am praying that that we all are so so different than we began 2023 that that man people won't even recognize us that they'll look like wow you are so different than when we began 2023 look at what god has done in your life wow let's pray let's pray I, I'm, I'm i'm excited i'm excited about it heavenly father oh lord i sense your presence here tonight god i know this is bible study I know that this is Bible study, but God, I, I so sense, I so sense your presence right now, God, that Lord, if we will do, Lord, what we have heard here tonight, that Lord, if we will forget the past, if, if we will not allow the past, whether good or bad, to have a hold of us, to limit us, to hold us back. But Lord, if, if we'll forget those things, if we choose, Lord, to forget, if we choose to not allow it to hold any power moving forward, Lord. And Lord, if we will learn to ask you, God, anything for big things, God, and, Lord, I do tonight. God, I, I ask you, God, tonight for every person, Lord, that I read all the names and all the names as they began to come to me. Lord, I pray that, God, <laughs> that, Lord, you would reveal, God, yourself to them, Lord, in a powerful, powerful way this year. And that, God, you would create in them, Lord, such a hunger, Lord, for the things of God in their life. That, God... Uh, they would ask, Lord, for such big things in their life that, God, it would take and could only take you, God, for it to happen. Help them, Lord, that, God, as they ask, that, Lord, their faith, God, would also increase, increase as they ask, Lord, as we ask, God. Lord, help us, Lord, to have a vision and to write it down of, Lord, what we want to uh, accomplish, Lord, and Lord, what we are asking you, Lord, to help us to accomplish. I pray that, God, that we would have a vision, Lord, that matches your vision, God. And that is, Lord, to, to reach people with the gospel, to, to share the love of God, Lord, with our community, with our families, with our co-workers, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I, I, I'm believing, Lord, for, for wonderful things. And, God, I, tonight, I, Lord, I just feel, I just sense, God, that, Lord, you, you, are, you are up to something, Lord. And, God, I know, I know that, Lord, I say that. I say it a lot, God, but, Lord, I, I do, Lord. I sense tonight that, God, you you desire to do something big in all of our lives, Lord. I pray that, God, that we would be passionate, Lord, about doing, God, what you have asked us to do. Lord, tonight, Lord, I also, God, I lift up these prayer requests. I lift up Keith tonight to you, Lord. 
Lord, going back to the basics. I believe what your word says, Lord, that by your stripes, he is healed. I know what it looks like, and I know what the facts say. I'm not denying any of that, God. Facts are facts. But, Lord, I know the truth. And, Lord, I know, I know that Keith and Marcy know the truth as well. And, Lord, facts are facts, but facts can change. But the truth will never change. And the truth tonight is this. The truth is that you sent your word, and your word healed them. The truth tonight, God, it trumps facts. Uh, facts can change. And, Lord, tonight, Lord, your word tells us, and, Lord, tells Keith and Marcy tonight, Lord, that, Lord, by, by the stripes that you have taken upon your body, upon your back, you took them, Lord, for Keith's healing tonight, God. And by those stripes, Keith is healed. Hallelujah. That's your word, Lord. And Lord, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just repeating you, Lord. I am just reminding you, God, of your word. I'm reminding you, God, of your promise. And Lord, tonight we believe, Lord, for healing. Tonight, Lord, we also we lift up Preston Townsend tonight, God. I, I, I'm not exactly sure, Lord, a closer walk. I pray tonight for Preston Townsend, Lord, and Lord, I pray that, God, that, Lord, uh, a closer walk, Lord, would take place. And, Lord, I pray that, God, you would create a hunger in Preston, a hunger that cannot be satisfied, Lord, by uh, the things of the world, the things around us, but, Lord, it can only be satisfied, Lord, as Preston draws closer to you. Create in Preston, Lord. And, Lord, I, I'm not only going to pray that for Preston, but, God, I pray that for me as well. Lord, not just for Preston and me, but, Lord, I pray that, Lord, for all of us tonight, that, God, all of us, Lord, they would create in us, Lord, a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, Lord. Lord, You've said in your word that if we would seek first the kingdom of God, that all these other things will be added. And, Lord, I pray that, God, you would create in every one of us, Lord, a hunger and a thirst that can only be satisfied, Lord, as we seek you, as we pursue you, God. Thank you, Lord. Wow. <laughs> wow. Lord, what, what an awesome, awesome presence, Lord, tonight in Bible study. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us tonight. And God, I believe it to be done. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wow. I don't know about you, but I have had a wonderful, wonderful time tonight in Bible study. I pray that uh, all of you have been encouraged by God's word, um, strengthened by his word, and uh, I just, I, I'm excited about this new year. I hope you are as well. Hey, Kim, good to see you online. Uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm excited about 2023. I'm excited. Listen, I'm not only excited about 2023, I'm excited about Sunday. <laughs> I can't wait to see what God's up to. I sense, listen to me, I sense that God is up to something. God, God is up to something. I remember uh, when we first went to uh, Crossroads of Grace, God spoke to us and said that he was taking us to the other side. And did he ever? <laughs> and and, and I, 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 again, I sense God, he's taking us to yet another level. How many of you could stand to go to another level? Are you ready to go to another level? I believe that that's what God is doing. God is taking us to another level. How many of you want to go along? <laughs> I got my hand up. I, 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 I want, I, I'm excited about what where God is taking us, and I hope that you are too. So with that said,
don't forget uh, all the young people ages 13 to 18. Uh, we are going to be meeting uh, this Sunday to go bowling, and I will be posting the information here. And just uh, if I don't get it posted, Krista, I believe that she's given you already all the information. Uh, uh, but if not, I'll make sure that she she once again make sure that you everybody has the information about that. And then tomorrow night, tomorrow night at the church, we meet together for intercessory prayer. And we invite you to come and be with us tomorrow night at the church, 7 o'clock. We come together. We, we sing a, a, a little bit, and then we pray. We, we, that's what we do. We intercede. And you are invited to come and pray with us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. And then Sunday morning at 1030 at the Crossroads of Grace, we're coming back together. And we've been in a, a message series uh, about our mouths. And, man, I don't know about you all. But, but it's helping me. I hope it's helping you as well. This Sunday morning, 1030, we invite you to come. Be, don't have a church home? You won't find a church that will love you any more than we love you at the Crossroads of Grace. We invite you to come be with us. Amen? So with that said, I hope that you have, and I pray that you have a wonderful and blessed rest of your week. Remember, we love you, and there's not a thing that you can do about it. We'll see you either tomorrow night or Sunday, all right? God bless you. Good night.